And then something which is really important to explain and a typical, uh, I would say, a topic for broader discussions. And sometimes when you discuss this with customers, also some energy uh, is in the, in the air, actually. Uh, the Java Virtual Machine, the OJVM. And there are a few things to clarify here. So do you have OJVM in your database? Do you need OJVM and do you use OJVM? So these things need to be clarified. And why am I insisting here? This is the reason. So if you have the Oracle Java Virtual Machine in your database, I went back, I revisited all the security um, bulletins, the security matrices back to January, 2015. And I used always the highest scored OJVM and put that in a slide here. So the average is almost eight of the risk score. And you see there are some like below. Recently, there are only a 3.1 and a 4.8, but you see over time, there are a lot of nine-ish uh, risk scores for OJVM. And in some of the bulletins, there were also two or three OJVM uh, fixes included. So I took always just the highest here to scare you a bit. And this is not to say OJVM is bad. Uh, OJVM is extremely powerful. And if you have stored Java code in the database and you use OJVM, I've seen a lot of good presentations by external guys, some ACE directors who showed clearly how much faster your Java code gets run when it's in OJVM. So OJVM is a good thing actually, but OJVM is extremely powerful. And that means if something is so powerful inside the database, if there's a security root hole, that uh, may be very, very critical right away because OJVM itself is so powerful. So don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying OJVM is bad. I'm just saying if you have OJVM, the probability that you have to patch quarterly is extremely high. And you can either use the OJVM bundle patch, which is a separate download, which I use, or you can use the combo patches the combo patches have OJVM database and I think also the grid infrastructure. So it's a bigger piece with separate subdirectories and then you can decide what you want to apply, whatever suits you better when you download. But anyways, how do you find out if OJVM is in your database? You query in a non-CDB DBA registry and in the CDB you query CDB registry and then you check for the component Java VM. So if Java VM is there, that means you have OJVM in your database. And that means you have to take a decision now. The decision will be, first of all, you patch it quarterly because you saw my scores, you saw the graph. There's always, almost always certainly an issue with OJVM. So you have to patch quarterly. Separate downloads, or you use the combos. And that's a bit of a downside with OJVM patching. It requires downtime or a blackout of the Java subsystem. Now, the good thing is if you have a rack environment, since uh, I think something around the 18.5, 18.6 uh, patch bundle, OJVM can be applied rolling in a rack environment and you have only a blackout in the Java subsystem. And if that blackout hits you, it's only a matter of if you are using OJVM or if you are not using OJVM. Because if you have no application using OJVM in our database, then that blackout doesn't matter for you. It's a blackout to the Java subsystem, not to your entire database. The Java subsystem needs to be restarted. And if no Java application is using the OJVM in the database, who cares? So it's important that you can apply in a rack environment the OJVM patch in a rolling fashion. If an application is really using the Java VM, then you have a blackout, then you better do this flip in a time which is off peak. But this MOS node here, it's, it's labeled with rack rolling install process, which I personally think is not a great idea because this MOS node has detailed queries 
And this is why I put the screenshot up here. It has queries to help you checking if you are using, if somebody is using, if an application is using Java VM in your database. And this is often not trivial to find out. And this is why there are queries in here. And you see already these queries go on X dollar structures. So they help you to find out, is somebody using my JVM or not? And don't get this wrong. If you have a Java application running against the database, that doesn't mean that it's using OJVM. I would say only a fraction of Java applications use our OJVM in the database. So use that node regardless if you're RUC or non-RUC to find out is OJVM used in my environment.